Today we are going to make the first true lager of the season and it's going to be a New Zealand Pilsner. I was sent these uh, this article um, a little while ago from a friend. This is in the July-August 2017 Brew Your Own and I thought at the time I had already made at least two beers with New Zealand hops and quite like them and I also am often making uh, pilsners and lagers and I thought oh no, why not yeah sure okay I, I didn't know it was a style but the Gordon wrote this article about uh, he was in New Zealand or I think that's what he said and drinking a bunch of these beers and they kind of made a BJCP style out of it, I guess, but basically you make a Pilsner with uh, New Zealand hops. One thing that was a little different, he said, is you wouldn't use 100% German Pilsner malt. It would give it a different character than the beers that those brewers were making in that country. So what I did is, since we're at the start of lager season and I needed my 50 pound sack of malt, I went and I got RAR. Premium Pilsner, which is a domestic Pils malt, and I've used it before, and it's nice enough. It's also cheaper than the imported malt, so I'm using 10 pounds of that. And then Gordon suggested some wheat for head retention. Now I've got uh, a little bit of a lineup of uh, some New Zealand hops. Now these two on the left are higher alpha acid so I'm gonna bitter with the Motueka which is lower and then at the end I'm gonna put in the other two for a little bit of a hop stand yeast he said they use a lot of dried yeast down there but just any kind of good lager yeast will work and the fine people at Imperial have hooked me up with uh, their yeast once again so we're mashing right now, uh, 150 I think is what I did. Uh, he said to mash low, and uh, I mean it's, you know, just, it isn't like anything super new or original, but I'm just making a Pilsner with the good lager yeast and New Zealand hops, and we'll see how she goes. So normally when I brew, I do the mash uh, at night and then cover this brew pot with a whole bunch of blankets and let it sit overnight and then I get up in the morning and do the boil. But today I'm doing it all at once, so which means I can do what this, what Gordon actually recommends for this beer is a first wort hop. So I don't know if you all ever do that, but I have done it several times over the years and I think it gives a slight uh, increased uh, unique effect of the hops so these will also be the the bittering hops but they're gonna start soaking in this wort right now so yeah I thought I can do it today so I might as well give it a try so one ounce of Motueka in the kettle winter is here folks cold out here too. Um, Alright, so the boil is done. Now I have two ounces of New Zealand hops here. I think I have Pacific Jade and Waimea. You know, maybe I gotta do this one at a time. Hold on. Hold on. Now what I often do is a hop stand and I would let it sit here for some time, but then you do get additional bitterness and for this particular beer I don't need it to be too bitter, but I do want some hop flavor. So basically, this will be, it takes a while to cool it down, but I'm not going to do a hop stand. I'm just going to proceed right now to get it inside and start chilling it. Speaking of video projects, here is the New Zealand Pills. I think it's been, I should have checked, but 
it's um like January eighth today, and I think it was like early mid December. It got kegged, maybe brewed on in early December. Got down to one point zero zero nine. Fermentation was healthy. I think I helped the yeast do what they're supposed to do. Chip, welcome to the backyard. We're now we've been below zero. <laughs> We're going below zero tonight. I don't even know. We're hardly getting above zero tomorrow. However, randomly today, it's 20 to upper 20s. Yeah, it's like 30-ish. So it's amazing. It's, it's a tropical heat wave. Good thing feels, we're drinking a new a New Zealand, a yeah, Southern Hemisphere beer. It feels uh, much more pleasant than minus you know five. Yeah. Um, we were talking before we started rolling about this. Chip had some tasting notes that you were getting I gave him some uh, like a week ago mm -hmm. and he had it in a crawler but then this is right off the tap yeah which I just, just do sometimes wonder if it makes a difference I mean there's a weak difference sitting on gas too but like this definitely is like crisper brighter I was telling you I got a little like apricot peachy stone fruit fruit side but now I'm getting and we talked about this more of that like a limey lime peel um, like the acidic, -y, not acidic, but the sharp part of pineapple almost, uh, and the toasty kind of like pilsnery malt is just like, phew. but it's way more crisp, bubbly. You can see it yeah. has not lost a head the whole time we've been out here. It's uh, I agree with the crispness, which is what you want in any kind of a pills. But the thing that makes this different is as we talked about in the beginning when we were looking at the, I can't remember if it was Gordon who wrote the article, but um. New Zealand hops have a little bit of their own flavor, and I've used them a number of times. This, uh, these particular ones are said to give resiny pine character, lime zest, also citrus. So uh, I saw a tangerine and grapefruit mentioned. Also, uh, you could think probably lemon. Mm -hmm. These are all the flavors that I get in New Zealand hops, and they're what I like. And instead of it being German pills with the German hop. Czech pills with Zaz. It's a New Zealand pills. NZP. I mean, it's just basically as advertised. Mm -hmm. It got, I mean, it's pretty light in color. I, I added eight ounce of wheat, which probably wouldn't add much color, and otherwise it's just raw premium pills. You know, it's clear. It's not like crystal clear. Mm -hmm. It'll probably get a little clearer. Um, I've not. Like I was a joke in one of my videos about lagering is I put it on tap and then I tried not to drink it. I think that was a session in the Appel Lager, but I've been not drinking this very much. I bet this keg has still got like four gallons in it out of the five. It's, and it's been in there for probably about a month. Yeah, if it lasts into even like fake spring, fake first spring, it'll be a great beer for that time. Up against your Maybach and your other... Yeah. Well, there'll for sure be some... There's always loggers that linger on into spring, especially if you make squeeze them in like in March when it still can be cold, and you get them brewed, and then mm. they can just be either in a carboy or a keg, and then make it into spring summer. But I have become a fan of the miscellaneous New Zealand hops I've used, and uh, I would say if you want to try something different, but not anything that's going to be um, like a potential negative risk. Uh, it's a small risk, a calculated risk to try, <laughs> you know. It's a nice palate cleanser, too, because I've been into, like, a lot of smoked beers and dark beers as, you know, dictated by the season and the sub-zero. So it's nice to have, like, ooh, a yeah. poppin' crisp Pilsner. Well, and that's what I end up getting a lot of in the winter with my Hellas, my Pils. This case is a Maybach. I might try to make a Surly Fest ooh. type thing, like a rye... With Fe sterling, rye, like sterling, and then they yeah. dry hop it too. Well, we'll see about the dry hopping, but yeah, some kind of like rye fun. fast beer, what's whatever. But I gotta figure that out. I'm sure we know somebody who knows somebody that can. Oh, well, that would be. Look I at did, the legit. Brew well, shoot. there's they give. We're going off track here, but maybe I'll cut a little this bit. Off. But we um have some information from the website, like malts True. and hop. I think you might be right about the sterling, and you can probably guess on the gravity. And we'll talk about it off camp. I bet I know someone that can get us. More percentages <laughs> yeah especially because it's a beer they don't brew anymore anywho so right yeah here, Don. coming up next uh oh. video will be next video i think is going to be a mash maker 
Maybach. Sterling Pounder. Speaking of Sterling. Maybach. Well, Dawson. Subscribe, <laughs> like, all that good stuff. Uh, chime in on your New Zealand hop experience. And uh, thanks for watching. Catch you later. It's like curling, kind of. Sterling curling. <laughs>